We're in Sydney. We at the Click AI Reality Tour, part of the roadshow around the world focused on AI and data analytics by Click. I have the pleasure of being joined by Arul Arul Nathan, who's the CIO of Village Roadshow Group. Arul, great to see you. Thanks for making time to catch up with me. No, it's been a pleasure uh, to be here. What an amazing event, an amazing day, a, a, a huge collection of peers and, and, and associates. And you've been on and off stage with the panel and various other things and won some awards. For our audience, though, who may not know you as well as they should do, I wonder if you could perhaps just introduce us to Village Roadshow Group, the company, and what you do, because I know you've got multiple parts. And then potentially, your, just walk us through your role and what a life and the day of CIO of the Village Roadshow Group entails. Yeah, absolutely. Village Roadshow is uh, Australia's leading entertainment brand. Uh, whether you're an everyday Australian or you're an international visitor, you would have had some exposure to the experiences that we offer. But in a nutshell, we operate uh, businesses in film distribution, exhibition, and we also own and operate theme parks. Uh, if you're based in Victoria or Tasmania, you're known uh, as uh, Village Cinemas. Yep. And if you're from Gold Coast, uh, and if you're an adventure lover, we have Sea World, uh, Wet and Wild, Movie World, uh, Outback Spectacular, and many more theme parks out there. We also own uh, Top Golf as a resort and uh, a roadshow film studios as well. So that's us in a nutshell. And uh, we welcome about uh, 5 million uh, cinema viewers uh, year on year and about 22 million uh, uh, adventure seekers into our theme parks and resorts. Uh, we offer experiences that becomes lifelong memories. And uh, I'm pretty sure you, your uh, parents, your relatives, your family members Absolutely. would have definitely yeah. experienced our uh, uh, services somehow. Yeah. Probably so much so, I feel like I should have shares in the company. <laughs> uh, I've got kids that are 20 and 23 now, and we've been through almost every one of those things. We can do a little tick box of, yep, we've been to that and that and that, <laughs> and most of them multiple times. Tell us, a, give us a little insight into kind of what a day in the life is like with regard to your CIO role, because given the nature of the organization and potentially the three core elements you operate in, where in some cases you're your own customer, in other cases you've got other companies that are your customers, you've got to very carefully balance between from a regulatory point of view or a competitive point of view. You've got a fairly unique role, I would think, as a CIO in this particular group, industry group as opposed to maybe banking or finance or aviation. What's a day in the life like for you currently in that role? And Yeah, you, you pointed out very well, uh, there are not one but many instances where we are our own customers. and. Yeah. Uh, that's where we need to make sure that we can maintain the competitive edge yep. and give that autonomy and uh, uh, isolation to those divisions as well. So it all goes back to the operating model that we run. Yep. Uh, we run uh, our service capabilities into two e exclusive portfolios. One is called a market differentiating capability, which could be very unique to a division to division. And then there is a shared capability where everybody can subscribe to that services. For an example, uh, if you're a, a film production company and you're looking for a cloud services, that's a shared uh, capability. Uh, we would give you one or two choices, Azure versus AWS, right. and you can choose one. But uh, say for an example, you're a theme park and you want to have a ticket booking system which is unique to your business, uh, or you're a resort where uh, you need a booking system which is unique to your industry. Then we provide those market differentiating capability where we allow the autonomy that you want to choose under the guardrails and the governance of the centralized federation. Yeah. It's, a, it's a fun challenge. And, and, and listening to some of the things you talked about on stage with your panel and, and other presentations and certainly through the day, I, you know, at the risk of sounding sycophantic, I mean, you have literally done some amazing things with data visualizations and so forth. Walk us through some of the core business challenges that sort of led you to then look at um, taking on this challenge and, and leveraging tools such as Click and others to sort of get from wherever you were before to where you are now. What were some of the key business drivers and data challenges you faced that sort of brought you to some of the things you've been doing now, which are, you know, as you spoke on stage, quite uh, transformative for the business? The list was very long. I'm not sure where to start and where Give to end. The 30,000 foot in, in, in a summary, I mean, uh, one of the challenges that most organizations face is the accessibility of the data. If you uh, look at this from a business perspective, who knows and who understands the business very well? The business yeah. SMEs. However, who's kept uh, miles and miles away from the data is the business SME. Right. So the data accessibility was a major issue for us. Data being trapped in the enterprise BI system and the data being only accessible to some of the data engineers and data analysts 
and not in the hands of the people who knew this best. That right, was a right. major issue for us. So how do we democratize this data? How do we make this data accessible to those individuals so that they can make a meaning out of it? That was one of the major challenges. The second one was the static data and the speed to the access to that particular right. data. We were living in the era where everything was two-dimensional static reports, which was based on 48 or 72 hours old data. And when you give that data, the end user also plays within the confined boundaries. He can only look at that from a two-dimensional approach. How about giving them an interactive model where they can actually play around with the data? So that was another key thing that we were looking at. Then again, data integration. Yes, if you're still living in the world of where you're collecting the data from 30 different systems and external sources, your data is already stale by the time you make a meaning out of it. So how do you near real time connect the data? How do you explore additional data, data points? And how do you make that accessible in the mobile? How do you make that in a visual, whether it's a graph, map, or yeah, a geographical yeah. diagram, rather than a two by two uh, table? That, those were some of the key challenges. And these were stopping business from using data to resolve some of the complex data problems. And that's when we realized we need a tool that is you know, flexible, user friendly, and it can be used as a channel to democratize the data. And that's where we partnered with Click. And listening to what you were talking about earlier on stage, visualization was a huge part of that in not only getting from, as you said, static data and PDFs or PowerPoints or spreadsheets to stuff that was on mobile devices and becoming sort of more data-driven decision making, but also I, I believe that the visualization element was a very big part of your sort of remit to get something that actually told the story and made sense of the data, is that right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there is a saying, right? Pictures takes thousand uh, words in one go, right? So. Uh, if you're looking at just the numbers, yes, there's a number, numbers is telling something, but if you put that in into a context, uh, whether it's a graph, whether it's a chart or something else, you can understand that pretty well. And you can start thinking non-linearly about yeah, what yeah. that could mean. And rather than being biased by your own thoughts, it leads to the real problem, real root cause. And that's when we realize that there is a power in this visualization, and somehow we need to extend this power and empower the end users. Walk us through some of the actual solutions that you implemented and, and I, I guess that the, some of the initial impacts, in the because it's still early days, I guess, that you've actually been able to measure from sort of what you had before as far as business processes and channel processes. Because I think a lot of people in our audience are going to be very interested to hear that not only have you actually made this transformative change in the way the business works with data and visualizes it, and as you said, being able to get that you know, thousand words from a picture thing, but what are some of the solutions that you implemented and what sort of impact has that immediately had in the business? Yes, see, we've been on this journey for a long time, since probably 2017 when we right. started this journey. And uh, our partnership has been strategic in nature with uh, Click as well. Uh, uh, as their product evolved, our maturity evolved, as our understanding evolved, their product also evolved. So we started our journey with ClickView, as most of you know, that, yep. that was the their old version of uh, providing this visualized uh, dashboards. Then we moved on to uh, ClickSense, and now recently we are the first customer uh, who are on a Click SaaS platform, yep. still utilizing the connector which is connecting to the very old legacy backend system. And this opens up as a use case or a case study for all other customers who may have a legacy backend system to connect that. And recently we've been experimenting their uh, Click answers mm -hmm. as well. But one thing that uh, has made a significant difference beyond just the um, real time uh, descriptive and diagnostic analytics is their platform called uh, Click Auto ML. Yep. We've been able to do some uh, significant things uh, which has changed our back office engine right from the demand forecasting to labor optimization, how those things uh, change in real time based on many external and internal factors, taking the human bias out. That has been the winner for us. I think every business can agree that human resource and human capital management is one of the biggest sunk costs in any organization, which often has a fairly negative connotation because people think that it's, it's a, a cost that they have to bear, and yet if you can leverage that data and actually show the benefit that this brings to the business, you can, you can do smarter things with your people, and certainly some of the complex challenges you have, whether it's SeaWorld, people running around with tickets there, or at a movie, or availability movies and so forth, well, you know, fantastic solutions on each of those and I'm sure we'll learn much more as they, they sort of come to light as well but even in the early days just listening to what you're talking about on stage seeing that you've made some you know some very big inroads for the business and at the end of the day 
that's really what we're after, aren't we? Deriving business benefit from data analytics and data science, machine learning and AI. And, and also congratulations to, that you've won two awards and I'm going to double check my notes so I don't get them wrong. But one was the Click Digital Transformation Award and Click Analytics Modernization and Analytics Leader of the Year. Firstly, recognition like that, what does it actually mean to get that after a, a number of years working really hard on this thing? And, and certainly I'm sure there's some recognition in your own organization, but to have peers recognize that work and then have it recognized at an industry event like that, what, how does that feel? That must be quite, quite a, a, a life moment for you? Yeah, definitely. This is an incredible honor. And again, as you said, it's not one, it's two awards. Indeed. But again, this reflects the, not just uh, the, all the hard work that I've done, but uh, my extended team. Yep. And as well as as an organization, the support that I received from the, my management as well. So, so it's a reflection of all the collective effort that we have put in together, my team, my management, and how we've used the data to transform the analytics world and influence some of the business outcomes directly. That, that's probably the first part of it. Secondly, I'm again humbled with uh, being this recognition as well. Uh, not just what it means for me, but what it means for the data as yeah, in, you yeah. know, the power of uh, data that it has to transform the business outcomes across the industry. And I believe this will be an inspiration for other organizations to use the data and start their transformation journey. I think the thing for me more than anything, and again, congratulations on both awards, but I, I, I love the fact that you're very humble about it, you've recognized it is a team effort. Uh, I remember I interviewed uh, Greg Robinson, who was the program director for the uh, James Webb uh, Space Telescope project. Very similar thing, won an exciting award at the, the Click Connect event, but he had a very similar view, which is, you know, it's great that he's been able to lead that team, but it, it, it took this enormous team to do that. But I think the thing that I said to him, which I'd love to say to you if you don't mind, and, and again, sycophantic, but it takes champions to lead those teams, and it takes someone to take that risk of leading the team to champion that idea. So without people like yourself and others of your, your stature, we don't make those big step forwards. You know, we don't see large organizations like Village Rocho Group make big changes forward because somebody has to actually carry the baton. So in, in, on both of those, I think on behalf of all our peers, thank you, because you've now given us all permission to take that step forward that maybe other directors and managers and boards may not be willing to allow us to do were it not the case that you've already been a, a trailblazer. So thank you for that in many ways, and congratulations on both awards. I wonder if you could walk us through sort of, you know, from here, I know a lot of audiences sort of tuning in are sort of thinking, okay, well, that's great. You've, you've had some good success. Where to from here? Walk us through sort of any other plans you've got to sort of evolve from where you are now with your data strategy, and in particularly where you might be looking to better leverage AI with some of the things that we talked about today. I guess our data click. strategy has been always underpinned by a customer at the heart, and there are probably three pillars I would say where we have a key focus. One is enhancing our data-driven decision framework to an AI-driven data decision framework, that's number one. Second is how can we provide a personalized experience to the customers, that's number two. And the third being how can we actually scale what we have done at right. the back office to the front office and to some of the near real-time customer experiences. And with that in mind, our key priority for the next six months is how can we infuse more and more AI-driven decision-making into the customer experiences that uses a near real time and makes those experiences more and more personalized in nature. While we continue to do that, we don't want to lose a focus on our backend as well. The imperative is uh, how can we continue to leverage data in the backend yep. efficiency yep. so that we focus on the cost optimization and operational efficiency, right from the demand forecasting to the labor optimization with the goal that uh, how can we streamline the process? How can we reduce the cost? How can we increase the productivity? While all these things look fancy, but you never want to lose a sight on governance, compliance, and security. Absolutely, yeah. As you said, yeah. I mean, like the data is most important. Protecting that data, the privacy of the customer data is very important. So we don't want to lose the uh, sight from the AI literacy, yeah. ethical use of that, and governance and compliance of the data that uh, we act as a custodian on behalf of the customer. But that's pretty much in a nutshell where our focus is going to be in terms of the data strategy. It's an interesting challenge isn't it? because now that you've implemented some of these solutions, you've got to actually continue to support them in an operational sense and, and maintain them. 
whilst continuing to invest in, in enhancing and growing them and then taking those capabilities to grow them through the rest of the organization and as you said from the front office the back office and vice versa. Well, amazing to catch up with you. Thank you so much for sharing some of the insights you have and, and it's been an amazing event. Huge congratulations to the team at, at Click and certainly the Click Australia team having champions like yourself. And again, congratulations on the two awards on behalf of you and your team there at Village uh, Rojo Group. And hopefully we'll have you back on the show again soon. For folk who might want to reach out to you, either peers or whomever else, what's the best way to get in touch with you? I imagine directly through LinkedIn or something to that effect, or through your company website? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, see, again, there are no secrets. We would love to share the love around. Uh, I'm active on LinkedIn. Uh, yep. People could reach out to me. If they have, a, they want to talk to my team, again, they can reach out to our website, contact yep. us form. And again, uh, the, the, the best place, best channel is the events like this, yes. where you can meet us, uh, uh, listen to the uh, panel discussions and interact with each other and share the wartime stories. Yeah. Awesome. So uh, I'm open, uh, LinkedIn, um, our yep. website, or uh, social events or uh, professional events like this. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, for our audience, we will have links to all of that so that you can reach out to Arul and connect on LinkedIn, reach out through the company website to talk to him and his team and share ideas, maybe collaborate in some way. And of course, there'll be a whole bunch of information about this event in particular and how you can reach out to the team at the event and talk to Click and the relevant peers and partners. Arul, thank you so much for your time. It's been an absolute pleasure. Again, congratulations on being part of an amazing event. It's been amazing to see this whole AI reality tour make its way around the world and, and it's been exciting to have it here in Sydney and hopefully we'll see you again soon at the next event. Thank you, thank you Des, and thank you to Click for uh, providing this platform. Indeed, well thanks for your time, we'll see you again Cheers. soon. Cheers.